reserva troncal. Ano yung reserva troncal? It is a reservation established by law for the benefit of certain relatives within the third degree who belong to the line from which the property came. What is the purpose of Reserva Troncal? The purpose is obviously to return property which has somehow strayed, naligaw, from one family to another, back to the same family from where it originally came. Let us assume that A and B are husband and wife, C and D are husband and wife, A and B have two children, E and F, C and D have two children, G and H. F and G got married, they have a child, I. Let's assume that F is dead. All right. A, the grandfather of I, donated to I a parcel of land. Later on, I died. He died intestate without a will. And so his entire estate, including the land, went to his mother G. Si G ang nagmana ng lahat. Let us assume for a while that we did not have Reserva Troncal. Let's assume na walang 891. Without Reserva Troncal, upon the death of G, who will get the land which G earlier inherited from I and which originally came from A? C and D. Okay? And upon the death of C and D, that will go to H. At kung may mga anak si H later on, down the line to his own children and descendants. In other words, i-visualize ninyo. Kung wala tayong reserva troncal, that parcel of land which might have belonged to the family of A since time immemorial, panahon pa nila pula po, nasa kanila na yan, that parcel of land would be forever lost. It would now belong to another family simply because of the accident of death. Anong accident of death? The accident of death that I died interstate ahead of G. Because of that accident, yun lang. The land which might have belonged to the family of A, since time immemorial, would now belong to the family of C and D. And so on down the line. Wala na. The purpose, therefore, of Reserva Troncal is to return the property back to the line from where it originally came. Ibalik do sa pamilyang pinanggalingan yan. Iyang naliligaw na pag-aaring yan. That, in essence, is Reserva Troncal. Let's use the same illustration. So, in this case, there is Reserva Troncal. That land is subject to a reservation established by law in favor of the relatives of I within the third degree and who belong to the line from which the property came. G is the person obliged to reserve. G is the reservista. I is the descendant from whom the ascendant acquired property by operation of law, which property previously came by gratuitous title from another ascendant or a brother or sister, I, the descendant, is also referred to as the prepositus. The person from whom that property originally came is called the origin. So, yun ang mga dramatis personae. A is the origin, I is the descendant prepositus, G is the reservista. The reservation is established in favor of the relatives of I within the third degree. Hindi pwede lumampas ng three degrees from I. And not only that, they must belong to the line 
from which the property came. So, who are qualified reservatarios or reservees in this case? C and D, while they are second degree relatives of I, are out. They do not obviously belong to the line from which the property came. The same thing may be said in the case of I. He is a third degree relative of I, but he does not belong to the line or the family from which the property came. How do we count the number of degrees? Uh, in the direct line, you simply count the number of generations. One, two. Okay, so C and D are second degree relatives. For those who belong in the collateral line, you ascend to the common ascendant, tumaas ka muna sa common ascendant, and then you go down to the collateral relative concern. So, sino ang common ascendant ni I at saka ni X? Si C and D. So, you first go up there, and then you go down to the collateral relative concern. So, one, two, three. H is a third degree relative. But out sila. What about here? Who are the qualified reservatarios? If A is still alive, kung buhay pa yung origin, can the origin be a reservatario? Of course, yes. Walang masama dun. That is the most ideal situation. Walang duda that the property would have come home if the property returns to the origin. Okay? Wala talaga no doubt at all. It has returned to the line from which it came. So, A is qualified as a reservatario. What about E? Si E muna unahin natin. Is E qualified as a reservatario? Yes. Because he belongs to the line from which the property came. Bakit nasabi natin na he belongs to the line? Eh, anak yan ng origin eh. Okay? And he, he is a third degree relative of I. One, two, three. Third degree. Qualified as a reservatario. Okay? What about B, the Lola of I? Is B qualified as a reservatario? There are actually two views. But I submit that the better view is that B is not qualified as a reservatario. Why? You know, go by the purpose of reservatroncal. The purpose is to return the property back to the family from where it originally came. So, Karinong family, family of A. Let's assume that, let's just assume that A in the meantime dies. Patay si A. If we consider B as a qualified reservatario, huh, then that means upon the death of G, if B and A are the survivors, B will be the one entitled to the property. Bakit? In determining who among the reservatarios will get the property upon the death of the reservista, we apply the other rules of succession. What are these other rules? Uh, nearer excludes the farther. Direct line preferred over the collateral line. So, B is a second degree relative while E is only a third degree relative. And E is merely a collateral relative. Well, B is a direct ascendant of I. So, applying these rules of succession, if we consider B as a qualified reservatario, B will get the land upon the death of G. Do you follow? All right. E, ang problema natin, halimbawa, itong si Lola B, may asim pa, nag-asawa. Nabiuda siya, let's say, patay na itong si A, nag-asawa kay X. At talagang may, may asim pa, nag-anak pa. Okay. Which is not an entirely impossible thing. You can become a grandmother at the age of 45 or 42. Diba? Pwede pang mga anak yan. Alright. G dies. If we consider B as a qualified reservatario, B will get the land. Later on, B dies. Oh, eh, there is a possibility that that land may pass to Y. Has it returned to the family from where it came? Hindi na. Nawala na rin yun. So, the purpose of reservatron kal would not be served. I submit, therefore, that to be qualified as a reservatario, you must satisfy a dual blood relationship. Number one, you must either be the origin yourself or you must be related by blood to the origin. 
And number two, you must be related by blood within three degrees to the descendant prepositus. Otherwise, I submit, you are not a qualified reservatario. Okay? All right. Before there can be a reserva, there must at least be two transfers of the property. The first transfer is from the ascendant or the brother or sister, the descendant prepositus. That first transfer must be by gratuitous title. Libre. Uh, donation or succession, namanamo, uh, gratuitous title yan. The second transfer is from the descendant prepositus to the ascendant reservista. This time, the transfer must be by operation of law. And you can only have a transfer by operation of law in either of two ways. Dalawang pwede lang posibilidad na magkameron ng transfer by operation of law from a descendant to an ascendant. The first is if the ascendant inherits property as his legitimate. And the second way is if the ascendant inherits property from a descendant by interstate succession. Yan lang. Those are the only two possible ways by which <coughs> an ascendant can acquire property by operation of law from a descendant. If he gets the property, inherits the property as part of his or her legitim, or if he inherits the property as his intestate share. Operation of law, by force of law. Okay? It is only when an ascendant, as in this problem G, has acquired property from a descendant huh? by operation of law that the reserva starts. The first transfer from the ascend from another ascendant, you first transfer is either downwards or horizontal. If the origin is an ascendant, pababa yan. Okay? I would always advise you to draw a diagram. Pag mayroong problem na baka may reserva, i-diagram nyo, i-trace nyo yung movement ng property. From the ascendant to the descendant propositus, by gratuitous title, pababa yan. If the origin is a brother or sister, horizontal yan. Okay. The second transfer from the descendant propositus to the ascendant reservista by operation of law is always upwards. Always upwards. Because from the descendant to an ascendant reservista. Alright. Prior to the second transfer, kung ang nangyari pala is first transfer, halimbawa, buhay pa si I. Property was donated by, the land was donated by A to I. I is still alive. Is there already a reserva? Wala pa. No reserva yet. And therefore, while I is the owner of that land, that is completely free property. It is not subject to any reservation. And therefore, that is totally within the control of I. He may sell it, he may alienate, whatever. Because there is no reservation yet. Okay? If I, therefore, sells that land, after it was donated to him by his grandfather, I. He sells the land to Mr. Zay for 5 million. And then after the sale, just three days after the sale, he dies. Namatay si I. And having died in the state, his entire estate, including the 5 million, was inherited by his mother, G. The question is, will there be a reserva over the 5 million? The answer is, there is none. Wala. Because unlike in basketball, we don't allow substitution in reserva troncal. In other words, unless it is the very same property which previously came from an ascendant or a brother or sister by gratuitous title, which is subsequently inherited by operation of law by another ascendant, there is no reserva troncal. Okay? Of course, there can be reserva regardless of what kind of property it may be. There may even be a reserva on money. Wala problema yun. 
There is reserved trunkal not there can be reserved trunkal not only over immovables. Whatever kind of property it may be, there will there may be reserved. But it must be the very same property. Yun mismong property na yon. Hindi pa din palitan. Ipag pa din palit wala. Must be the very same property which previously came by gratuitous title from an ascendant or a brother or sister, and which had subsequently been acquired by operation of law by another ascendant. Okay. All right. So, if I is still alive and he still has that land, it is within his power to determine whether or not there will be a reserve at Rongkal later on. Okay? Sabi nga ng ibang civilists, the descendant is the arbiter of the reserve. He has the power of life and death over the reserve. If he does not want the reserve to arise later on, simple. He simply sells the property or exchanges it with another property. That will effectively prevent the reserva because it will no longer be the very same property. Okay? Or, mas mahirap gawin, medyo mas more circuitous route, he gets married and then he has a legitimate issue. The moment the descendant has legitimate issue, kung nagkamaroon niya ng anak, alimbawa si S., Ah, wala na. Reserva Troncal is not possible anymore. Why? Because if the descendant has his legitimate issue, there is no way, ah, no way, that his ascendant can acquire property from him by operation of law. O, tinan natin. Kung may anak itong si I, if I has a legitimate son S, G would not be entitled to a legitimate. Diba? That's out of the question. If there are legitimate children concurring with legitimate parents, the legitimate parents are excluded. Not entitled to any legitimate. The same thing may be said in the case of interstate succession. If I dies, leaving legitimate issue S, he dies interstate, his entire estate will go by operation of law to S. Wala kay G. So, that's the reason why, according to some, that's one of the requisites of Reserva Troncal, na the descendant must leave no legitimate issue. That's the reason. Because there is no way that an ascendant can acquire property from him by operation of law if he happens to have legitimate issue of his own. Okay? All right. So, it is only when G acquires the property from I that land, by operation of law, that the reserve starts. Automatically. Now, while the property is with the reservista, habang hawak-hawak ng reservista ang property, uh, may reserva trunkal na yan, okay? It's already reserved in favor of A and E. What is the nature of the right of the reservista over the property? Is the reservista just like the fiduciary heir in a fide commissary substitution, having only the rights of a usufructuary? The answer is no. The reservista is actually the owner, uh, owner of the property under reserva troncal. But that ownership is subject to the threat of extinction, subject to a resolutory condition. What is the resolutory condition? Which, if fulfilled, will terminate the rights of the reservista. If there are, at the moment of death of the reservista, surviving reservatarios. That is the resolutory condition. If, at the time of death of G, there are surviving reservatarios, then the rights of the reservista are extinguished and they are transferred to the reservatarios. Okay? Can the reservista therefore sell the reserved property during his lifetime? Pwede ba niya ibenta? Yes! The answer is yes. But that sale is subject to the same resolutory condition. How about the reservatarios? During the lifetime of G, can A and E also sell the property? Yes, but that sale is subject this time 
to a suspensive condition. So, if the question is asked, if the same property, the property under Reserva Troncal, is sold to third persons, in one sale, it is sold by the reservista, let's say in favor of Mr. Y, and the, reser the reservatarios, on the other hand, sell the same property to Mr. Z, who, as between Z and Y, will have better rights. Ang sagot dyan, it depends kung sino mas magaling magdasal. Okay? Why? In the case of Mr. Y, he will have to pray very hard on his knees that G will outlive all of the reservatarios. Okay? In the case of Mr. Z, he will have to pray just as hard that any of the reservatarios will outlive the reservista. Whoever prays better comes out the winner. All right? All right. Okay. Let us assume, same facts, that land came from A, donated to I, then I dies interstate, property is inherited by operation of law by G, Reserva Troncal. Will there be any difference if that land originally belonged to Mr. D? Sabi natin, A and D were childhood uh, friends. So, a long time ago, D donated that land to A. And they never imagined that someday their children would marry each other and that they would have a common grandchild, I. So, the property was donated by D to A. Later on, nagkameron ng apo, A donated the land to I. I dies interstate, the land is inherited by G. Okay? Ang tanong, meron bang reserva troncal? The answer is yes. Meron. Will there be a change in the reservatarios? Will all of them now be considered as qualified reservatarios? The answer is no. The same reservatarios would be A and E. Why? In reserva troncal, we do not concern ourselves with the remote source of the property. Our inquiry only goes back to the origin. Hanggang origin lang tayo. Wala na tayong pakialam kung saan ang galing ang property na yan before the origin. Okay? Our inquiry ends with the origin. Hanggang origin lang. Right. So, no change in the qualified reservatarios. Okay? All right. Now, in Reserva Troncal, as sabi ko kanina, we apply the uh, the reservation, rather. The reservation is established by law in favor of a class. Okay? In favor of a class. Sino ang kasali dito sa class? All relatives of the descendant prepositus within three degrees and who belong to the line from which the property came, they all belong to that class. In, fav in whose favor the reservation is established. In determining who among the members of that class will actually get the property once the reservista dies, we apply the other rules of succession. Okay. Ano yung mga other rules na yan? You know, rule of preference between lines. Rule of proximity. Okay. We even apply representation, even reserva troncal. Pwede representation. Provided that the representative is himself a relative within three degrees counted from the descendant prepositus. Pwede even ang representation. Let us assume that uh, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. Okay. So, B got married two times. First marriage with A, three children. Second marriage with B, three children. Okay. A, the parent of A is D, parent of B is E, parent of C is F. All right. Uh, 
B is dead. E donated a parcel of land to J. Later on, J died intestate. And his entire estate, including that land, was inherited by his mother, C. Oh, ang tanong, is there reserva troncal? Answer, yes. There have been two transfers. The first transfer is from an ascendant to a descendant by gratuitous title. Second transfer from the descendant upwards to the ascendant is by operation of law, kasi interstate. So, reserva. That land is covered by reserva troncal. If C dies and E is still alive, no question, the property will go to E. Why? Although J has many relatives within three degrees, E, G, H, I, K, L, K, even M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, they are third degree relatives of J. Nonetheless, E will exclude all of them. Rule of preference between lines. Direct ascending line is preferred over the collateral line. So, E will get back the property. So, para mas maganda patayin natin itong si E. E is dead. C dies. Who gets the reserved property? All the relatives of J. Within three degrees, okay, and who belong to the line from which the property came, are considered qualified reservatarios. GHI, KL, second degree relatives yan ni J. Qualified. Same thing with MNOPQRSTU. Third degree relatives. Do they all belong to the line from which the property came? Yes. Because GHI, K and L are all descendants of E. Their common grandparent. Okay? So, GHI, K and L will divide the property. Now, in dividing the property, they will not divide it equally. Because sabi ko nga, among the reservatarios, the other rules of succession would apply. What rule will apply here? The rule of double share for full blood collaterals. Sabi nga. Full blood brothers and sisters are entitled to twice as much as half blood brothers and sisters. So, K and L will be entitled to two shares each as against GHI who will be merely given one share each. Two plus two, that's four, five, six, seven. So, each one of the half-blood brothers of J will get one-seventh, while each one of the full-blood brothers will get two-seventh. Okay? Applying the rule of double share for full-blood collaterals. If G is dead and L is also dead, M and U can represent them. Even in reserva troncal, pwede ang representation. As long as the representative is himself a relative within three degrees of the descendant prepositus. So, one, two, three. One, two, three. Third degree relatives. So, the one-seventh of G will go to M. The two-seventh of L will go to U. Okay? They inherit by representation. This is the only situation, by the way, when there is representation in the collateral line. Ito lang ang sitwasyon sa ating batas. When there is representation in the collateral line. There is generally no representation in the collateral line. This is the only exception. And in exception, when nephews and nieces survive with at least one uncle or aunt. So, M and N, M and U rather, are nephews and they have survived with their aunts and uncles, H, I, and K. Okay? If all of the brothers of J are dead, G, H, I are dead, K and L are both dead, the only survivors would be the nephews and nieces. This time, the nephews and nieces will be inheriting in their own right. In their own right. 
And since they will be inheriting in their own right, the division will be per capita. Per capita, not per stirpes. Tao-tao. But is still applying the rule of double share for full blood collaterals. The rule of double share for full blood collaterals applies not only to brothers and sisters, but also to nephews and nieces. Hanggang dun lang. Ha? Grand nephews and grand nieces, hindi na yan. Hanggang nephews and nieces, applicable ang rule of double share for full blood collaterals. So, STU will get twice as much as MNOPQR. So, you have 2 plus 2 plus 2, that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 12 for each of the half-blood nephews and 2, 12 for each of the full-blood nephews and nieces. If M is dead but he survived by Q and U is dead, survived by R, Q and R will no longer participate. Hindi na. They cannot represent M and U. Why? Wala na yan. Walang right of representation in favor of grandnephews and grandnieces. And moreover, the reservation is established only in favor of relatives of J within 3 degrees. They are already 4th degree relatives. So, they cannot participate anymore. Okay? Alright. Next point. Let us assume that when I died, okay, he died intestate huh, without a will, but with this modification. When he died, he left the following properties. The land which previously was donated by A. So the land. Let's say the land is worth 4 million. And then he had other properties from other sources. These other properties are worth 6 million. So his total estate is 10 million. I dies intestate. The entire 10 million is inherited by G. Okay. Tanong, will there be reserve at Roncal? Of course, meron. Next question. Will the reserva cover the entire estate? Of course not. Hindi yung buong 10 million. Ha? Yung other properties, eh, hindi yan covered na reserva from other sources yan. It did not come from an ascendant or a brother or sister by gratuitous title. Only the land will be covered by the reserva. Next question. Will the reserva cover the entire land? The answer is yes. It will cover the entire land. Entire land. Why? Remember that I died intestate. Intestate. That means his entire estate passed by operation of law to G. Every single item of property, therefore, within that estate, which previously came by gratuitous title from an ascendant or a brother or sister, will be completely covered by the reserva. E ano yung reserva maximum or reserva minima? You don't apply that if the descendant prepositus died intestate. You only apply either reserva maxima or reserva minima if the descendant prepositus died with a will. Huh? Okay. Let's assume that this time he died with a will. Sabi niya, I give my entire estate to my mother G. Alright. Dito tayo papasok sa reserva maxima, reserva minima. Under the theory of reserva maxima, as much huh, of the reservable property as can be contained in the legitim. In other words, ang reservable property dito yung land. Hanggat kakasi yan sa legitim, isaksak mo sa legitim. So, one half of 10 million, that's the legitim of G. Di ba? Legitimate parent, only survivor. One half of 10 million, that's the legitim of G. That's 5 million. That's the legitim of G. The land which is worth 4 million can obviously be contained in the legitim. So, under the theory of reserva maxima, the entire land is reservable. Yung reserva minima takes into account the fact that all of these properties pass to G partly by will and partly by operation of law. So, one half of the land passed by will 
and the other half passed by operation of law. One half of the six million passed by will, and the other half passed by operation of law. Therefore, under the theory of reserva minima, only one half of the land is subject to the reserva. Okay? Tandaan lang natin, ha? The, the two theories of reserva maxima and reserva minima, that's relevant, relevant only when the descendant prepositus dies with the will. If the descendant prepositus died in the state, Forget about maxima and minima. Okay? All right. Next point. How is reserva extinguished? Death of the reservista, that terminates the reserva. Even the rights of the reservista are terminated, they pass to the reservatarios. Death of all the reservatarios. Kailangan lahat mamatay. Ha? Pag may isang natira, okay siya. Sa kanya mapupunta yung reserve property. Loss of the property without the fault of the reservatario, of the res reservista rather. Waiver, a waiver by all of the reservatarios. If they do not all waive, halibaw, sampu ang reservatarios na qualified, yung siyam nag na, pero isang matigas ang ulo ayaw mag -wave. The reservatron cal continues in its entirety. Okay? All right. Prescription may also cause the extinguishment of the reserva, as well as if the reserve property is somehow uh, registered as a free property, especially so if it has already been acquired by innocent purchasers for value who have relied on the uh, certificate of title. 